All right, so we're gonna give everybody just a few minutes to start signing on. Um, so welcome to everybody who's joining us today. We're all super excited to have you here. Um, hopefully we have some students that are coming in the fall. That's super exciting. If you've already decided to come to UNH, um, let us know in the chat. We would definitely like look out for you when we're on campus. Um, also, if you have any questions at all during the whole, our whole chat today, that's gonna be our biggest takeaway. Um, if it's about something we're talking about or if it's just about dorms, food, whatever it is, um, you have three students on the line and an alumni and who's also a staff member here at UNH. So ton of awesome perspectives. So feel free, ask us anything you want to. But today our main goal is to talk about how to stay active in college. So what you'll kind of see today is that this question can be answered in a lot of different ways. And that's one of our goals is to give you all of your options because the same thing definitely does not work for everybody. Um, I watch what some of my friends do and it would never be something I could sustain versus like what I like to do on campus and how I stay active is definitely unique as well. So we're all just gonna go around and start to introduce ourselves um, just so you can kind of get a sense of who we are. So I'll go and then Juliana, Megan, and then Emily, if you wanna round us off afterwards. So my name is Nicole, I'm a junior at UNH. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. I'm a neuroscience major. And we're also gonna tell you our favorite campus rec active in college story, which is kind of a fun category. But um, my most memorable one would probably be um, using the outdoor pool. I've used it once since I've been at UNH. And I feel like I get asked that all the time since we have an outdoor pool. People are like, do you actually use it? And like my first weekend on campus freshman year, um, me and a bunch of like my new friends, we went and it was packed. So we were kind of like standing in the pool, but it was so hot. So it was really fun. But yeah, that was, everyone's always like, you, do you actually use that? I'm like, yep, I have one time. <laughs> but Juliana, do you want to go next? Yeah, hi, I'm Juliana Mastin. I'm a sophomore neuroscience and behavior major um, and I'm from Schenectady, New York. Um, and my favorite campus rec story uh, would probably be the first time uh, that my friends and I went to a Zumba class together. Uh, we all got on the bus and um, we all like were super nervous because we had never gone to a group X class together um, or at all. And we got there and we were just like, standing by ourselves and then Caroline who's the group X instructor uh, was so nice and welcoming and we all just like got up and danced and had a great time and we went every week after that so it's probably my favorite. Hi I'm Megan I'm a junior I'm a psychology and justice studies school major. Um, my favorite memory would be um, last semester I played kickball and my team we only had one game because we lost by a lot, but it was still so much fun. It was the most fun intramural sports game I've ever played, um, but we did lose by a lot, but it was really fun. Awesome. Hey everyone, my name is Emily Goopel. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am currently the coordinator of youth and instructional programs in campus recreation. So what that means is I actually get to do a bunch of different programming for the kids that live in the Durham and kind of Seacoast community. So if you're ever in the Hamill Rec Center and you see a bunch of little uh, like, five to 11 year olds running around. It's usually me running after them, chasing them or, uh, you know, playing dodgeball with them on the court. So that's a little bit about uh, what I do there, but I am also an alum. I graduated in 2011. My bachelor's is in recreation management and policy with minors in psychology and youth development. Um, and let's see my favorite campus rec uh, kind of memory. I'll, I'll go back to when I was an undergrad. Um, and I think it was joining the club softball team for me. I was someone who was like super involved and always played a team sport growing up. And I think that was one of my biggest fears um, coming to college was that I wasn't going to have that like routine of practice. I wasn't going to have my friend group of my teams. Um, and I'm also super competitive. So I was like, oh, where am I going to like still get that kind of fill there? And I found the club softball team, which provided me all of that and more right from the get go. So I felt like I never missed a beat. And they're still some of my greatest friends to this day. That's a little about me. Awesome. So uh, I think we're each going to just highlight a topic before we get some questions, maybe we can like change our direction a little bit. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about intramural sports. I know that it's already been mentioned in a couple of our memories, but intramural sports are a really great opportunity to get active on campus because it's just UNH students against UNH students. So we have all kinds of sports from soccer, basketball, volleyball to kickball, intertube, water polo, cornhole. 
some of like the more like on not not unpopular but untraditional maybe sports to play but definitely still super fun and like I said it's just you against other students on campus so you can have a team full of soccer players that have played their whole life and they're really excited to get out on the field or you can have like Megan was saying her friends that play kickball that also nobody's like insanely good at kickball because it's like not a real sport but also like maybe you have people that have like never really played a sport they're just having fun totally fine or um broom ball is actually the most popular intramural sport you just go out on our ice rink in sneakers with, with like kind of a broom looking hockey stick and that's always really fun because nobody's good at broom ball. <laughs> There's no way you can be that good at it. So that's a really fun opportunity as well. Um, I know a lot of dorms will put teams together. I actually used to ref intramural soccer. So I got to kind of like watch the teams come in. And sometimes it would be like Williamson, like floor two. And it was like just this whole where their RA was like, who wants to play soccer a couple times a week? So that's like a really fun way to get out of your dorm. You can also just like join a random team. So if you really want to play, but you don't have like 10 people to sign up with, you can sign up and they'll just place you on a team or they'll make a team of full of people who like didn't have their own team to go. So you can really do it any way you want to do it. And there's so many different options at all times of the year too. So if you don't want to be outside in the cold, maybe in the winter, we have like indoor soccer and then it gets nice out and you want to move back out. All different kinds of things for you to do. So that's probably one of my favorite opportunities. Um, I actually played in a soccer game the other night and I'm not good at soccer, but it was still so much fun. We lost Megan by like so much, <laughs> but it was still really, really fun. Um, but then Megan, do you want to talk about club sports? That's kind of like a nice step up. Yeah, of course. So um, I'm on the club hockey team here at UNH um, and Nicole's on the club lacrosse team. But um, the club sports that we have are more there where like UNH, everyone on my team is from UNH and will play other um, colleges. So like, for example, we, my hockey team will play like UVM, Northeastern, which is in Boston, BUBC, those kind of club teams. Um, I played hockey like all my life. So kind of like Emily was saying in her introduction, um, I was really looking for something to make friends through and just like stay active with. So um, it was a really aw awesome opportunity for me. Um, I got to practice twice a week, which wasn't a ton. So in high school, I was used to every day and then went to twice a week. And then we had games pretty much once a week. So in those were on the weekend. So it was a good mix of not taking up my entire schedule, but had like enough time to get on the ice, stay active and still enjoy it. Um, and also I met a lot of great people through that. So a lot of my hockey friends now, like we still stay in touch all the time, even through COVID and all of that. So that's really nice to have just friendly faces all over campus. So um, I highly suggest if you're looking for something to do and you love a sport that we offer in a club, I highly suggest doing it. I'm really glad that I did it. So Juliana, do you want to talk a little bit about our rec center that we have on campus? So maybe if organized sports aren't your way to get active, you can talk, just maybe you give us an overview of all the different ways you can get active just in the rec center? Yeah, definitely. Um, the rec center is probably one of my favorite places to go on campus. I spend so much time in that building. Um, I definitely spend a lot of time working there because I am an employee of Campus Rec. Um, I spend more time working there than working out, which should probably change a little bit. Um, but I also go to a lot of the programming that they offer at the rec center. So I mentioned before, my favorite memory was going to Zumba with my friends. Um, and that's just one of the group X classes that we offer. We offer so many other ones, including uh, beginner weights, which I know I've seen Emily at before. I've checked her in for those classes uh, while I've been working. Um, and then also we have cycling, yoga, um, there's so core and more, there's so many different ones that are offered, um, you know, this year for COVID um, purposes. We've also offered virtual programming, um, which was nice for students, you know, if they weren't living on campus, but still wanted to stay active in their homes, they could use that as an option. Or if students just didn't feel comfortable going into the rec center, um, they could do that as well. But there was also that in-person component, which was really nice for students that did want to get out of their uh, dorms. Um, and the rec center itself just offers so many different spaces and ways to stay active. 
um, you know, you would think that when I remember when I went to the gym, I was like, oh, it's probably just like big heavy weights and like, that's not my thing. Um, so I'm probably not going to go there much, even though I want to stay active, but it's not like that at all. We have an indoor track, which is a 10th of a mile. Um, we have a bouldering wall, which I know a lot of my friends love doing. Um, there's courts um, for that intramurals are held on sometimes and lots of people play basketball on them. And there's just a lot of different areas to work out in with treadmills, so many different machines that I can't even name. Um, so really, that's one of the things I love about the rec center is that it just offers something for everyone so that everyone can stay active in a way that they feel comfortable with. So as kind of an extension of our rec center, they also have an awesome outdoor adventures program. So Emily, do you want to maybe introduce us to some of the opportunities there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do also have an outdoor adventures program. So say out being outdoors and going hiking up in the whites or even just exploring college woods, which is right here on our campus is your thing. We have opportunities for that. So if you are someone who has never camped before and you want to start camping, we have a bunch of 101 series. Those things will teach you how to, you know, set up a tent, what gear you might need, how to make sure the, the hiking trails are that you're doing maybe while you're camping are appropriate and safe for you and, and what kind of gear do you need now if you're sitting there being like well i don't have that gear good news in the same exact place you actually can rent out a wide variety of gear whether that's like micro spikes snowshoes um i think we even have like sups stand-up paddle boards we have like wetsuits we have boots we have the camping stove we have the tents the whole shebang pretty much if you need it to go be in the outdoors um we have it for you and all of that is either kind of free or there might be some minimal charges we try to keep it really cost friendly you know because well Hey, we get it, right? And we just want you to be able to go outside and do that. They also schedule some um, trips. So sometimes travel is actually like included. You hop in there, there's a trip leader who will kind of make sure that you're all good to go. You can go stay up in a yurt up in the White Mountains um, and pieces like that. So Outdoor Adventures is a really super fun way to kind of explore the outdoors, explore New Hampshire and some of the more local communities um, and kind of get everything you need. Now, also, I want I want to highlight a really important piece is we actually have a really cool organization on campus called Northeast Passage, um, which focuses on adaptive recreation. Um, and so that might mean if you utilize different pieces of equipment, say you utilize a wheelchair um, or, you know, a walker or something like that, and maybe we need some adaptive pieces of equipment, we want to make sure you can still go on those trips and enjoy yourself. So we have a really great relationship with Northeast Passage, which provides all these kind of varying pieces of equipment to make sure that you're able to kind of um, enjoy that trip as well, um, regardless of any abilities. Um, so that's really important. Um, I think there's only there's one other thing that I'd love to highlight from from Campus Rec too. Um, we mentioned aquatics, there's an indoor, there's an outdoor pool, but we also have some different like certifications that Campus Rec can also help you obtain. So if you're someone who needs CPR first aid, say for a summer job, or you just want to have that, we offer cert certificates like that. Um, we have an awesome demonstration kitchen. Maybe you want to learn how to cook. You can actually, you and a bunch of friends rent out the kitchen and we'll provide kind of an instructor in there for you to teach you how to make a meal and get comfortable in the kitchen. Uh, we have level one archery. So if you want to kind of know how to instruct archery you can get that certification become a lifeguard um, become a personal trainer uh, we have all of those kind of certificates and programs and you can definitely reach out to the welcome desk they'll get you more info on that but there's some really cool professional development opportunities for you um, if you're looking to get involved in that way yeah I think I like a good extension from that too and I think a question that a lot of students rightfully so have have worries about when they're going to college is am I gonna get a job when I'm in, in college? Am I gonna be able to make money? Um, and I think that first of all, it's like schedule dependent personally. Um, it's like how you're comfortable. Internet is lagging. Okay, I'm moving again. <laughs> okay, so um, I know my plan was to kind of give it a couple weeks when I got to college, see how my schedule was going to go, see if I could work. And then my first job on campus was with Campus Rec. Like I said, I uh, ref intramural soccer. So I went to their training course on like rules and then I just literally was given a whistle and a shirt and I was thrown out there with the intramural soccer kids. And it was really fun, just a few nights a week. If you're interested in staying employed through campus rec because um, that's just like maybe your interests kind of lie around athletics being active stuff like that 
you could be like Juliana, you can work at the Welcome Center and you can kind of help people out, answer some questions, help out with the equipment. Um, you can also work as like an instructor. So you can get those certifications that Emily was talking about to make sure you're prepared and kind of start your journey in that direction. Um, you can also work just for like Campus Rec as a whole. You can help facilitate some sport clubs. You can help facilitate intramural sports in more ways than just being a referee. You can be like an organizer and like help schedule the refs and make sure that everybody has like the shifts they need to have. So there's so many different things you can do. And a kind of a close thing to um, Campus Rec is athletics. So we are a D1 athletics school and that is another great employment opportunity. So you can work in ticketing in one of our like stadiums in our hockey arena and our football stadium. So you can be selling, collecting tickets. You can be like the event staff who helps set up and take things down. You can work in there too. I know that's big for students that are interested in like event planning is to work at our Woodmore Center because you can kind of see from start to finish like a big event go down, like our career and internship fair is held in the Whittemore Center. So like you can kind of see that whole process of how they transition it from a hockey rink to a career fair and then back to a hockey rink all kind of in one week. So it's kind of crazy to see it all happen. But I know that people who are interested in staying active might be interested in also watching some D1 sports if that's not what they're going to be necessarily involved in. And Juliana is part of our Cat Pack captains who are our awesome kind of like student section leaders on campus. So Juliana, do you want to talk about maybe like how you got involved with them and then also kind of like what you guys do? Yeah, I always love talking about Cat Pack uh, just because it's been <laughs> such a huge part of my time so far here at UNH. Um, so I heard about uh, the Cat Pack captains uh, during an admitted students day. I came in April and I awkwardly walked up to the guy that was standing at the campus rec table and I said, so do you guys have like a lot of pride here? <laughs> um, and he was like, yeah, we actually have a whole org based on that um, and told me that they were called the Cat Pack Captains. And I said, OK, well, if I come here, I'm going to join that org. And um, that's what I did the second week of uh, school. I um, met them at uh, U-Day and I signed up for their email list. And for context, U-Day um, is this awesome event that we hold and all of the orgs um, and, you know, different programs, sororities and fraternities, they all put tables out on um, T Hall lawn and you can just walk around and get information to see what you might be interested in. So I got on the email list and I went to a meeting um, and it was super fun. They've become like my little family, honestly. Um, we're all super close, we get food together. Um, but our big thing that we do is we go to almost all the sporting events that we can make it to. Um, my So last year as a freshman and my first semester uh, fall, I went to 64 sporting events in total. Um, I don't know how I managed that, honestly. <laughs> um, but um, there was some weekends I went to like three games a day, <laughs> kind of crazy. But um, I one of the big sports that we have on campus is hot men's hockey um, and football are also two very big sports. Um, I really enjoy going to the men's soccer games. Um, they've been doing really well. They just made it to um, the NCAA championships. Unfortunately, they were eliminated, but I have hope for next year that we're going to make it even farther. Um, but for Cat Pack specifically, what we do is we make all these signs. Uh, we make a lot of positive signs, um, but we also make some, you know, chirping signs because um, what's the fun in not uh, being able to chirp the other team a little bit, you know, kind of get in their head give our team a little bit more of an advantage. Um, so we make those and we bring them and get to hang them up. Um, and then we also put face paint on and um, the president of Cat Pack, he has a cowbell. And we, like Nicole said, we lead the student section in cheers. Um, we have this thing called the cheer Bible. It's a very long word document that has all of the cheers that you, um, I think have ever been done at UNH. Um, and we kind of just go through that and we do the cheers that we like. Um, and we have different traditions within Cat Pack. We bring the I Believe in UNH banner um, that we roll out during some games. Um, so little things like that, um, you know, just try to bring some pride um, to a lot of the games and, you know, get students up and ready and uh, cheering for those teams. Because I mean, 
I hope that it helps the teams out. Um, I like to think that it does and that they enjoy it. Um, I know I have a great time, so hopefully they also get a kick out of us kind of losing our minds. I, I leave a lot of games with no voice left for the next day, so I'm screaming so much. But um, yeah, so that's something that has been a really uh, great experience that I've been able to be involved in. I am going to take a second just to talk about the links that I've put in the chat for everybody who's watching on YouTube, just so you can be kind of following along. Um, I've given you a list of the sport clubs and the intramural sports on campus. So if you're like me, Emily, or Megan, and you're like, softball is my thing, I want to play softball, check it out, see what sports we have. Um, there's a ton. So you can really see if what you're interested in is there or something that you like want to kind of get into is there as well. And then intramurals are just kind of a great thing to check out, look forward to see the crazy things that kids do on campus and kind of get like excited for that. But I also put up um, our group exercise classes. So my friend Laura said it best, it's really hard to motivate yourself to work out, but it's easy to work out when someone's telling you to for an hour. So if that's like the motivation that you need to work out, that's awesome. I also think it's really great because some days I just like wake up and I'm like, like, I don't want to go to the gym, but I can just make myself walk into the room and then they can just kind of take it from there. It's like, I don't have to be the motivation the whole time. So you can just kind of get yourself there. It's also a really fun way to try new things. So I know Juliana said that her and her friends went to Zumba. And honestly, I don't know where the heck else you're going to find like Zumba and <laughs> like just kind of laying around when it's really right here on campus. And all of those group exercise classes are already included in your tuition, no additional cost. So if you just want to go try Zumba once, go, because maybe when you're an adult, you want to try it, you're going to have to like pay to go to like this, um, like class and all this stuff. It's no additional cost to us UNH students. So go try everything, try Zumba, yoga, cycling, everything that you can. I definitely want to try cycling. That's like the next thing on my list because I do like using the bike for cardio at gym. So I really want to try cycling, but I love all that list. So if you're, maybe you're really into cycling, check it out or again, new things, you can look at them as well. And then finally I did, I had to do it. I put a video of U Day because I just don't think that you could understand like how much fun U Day is until you watch like, and it's still not the same, but when you watch like the cool UNH compilation videos with like the drone shots and stuff, you can really see like all of the crazy stuff that goes on. I think U Day is when I put my name down for the lacrosse team. Like I think Megan said, that's kind of how she connected with hockey. Um, so it's definitely a huge outlet. I know a ton of people became tour guides that way. So that's also a huge thing on campus here, but, um, we have about like seven minutes left. So I'm going to encourage any questions to be in the chat, but, um, Megan, I don't know if you wanted to talk about maybe like some of your experience with like dining on campus, because that is a big part of staying active, staying healthy is what you eat as well. So do you want to maybe talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So um, I consider myself a very picky eater. So coming to UNH, that was one of my like biggest concerns. Um, but I always like to say when I'm on tours and everything that I have never gone to the dining hall and not found something to eat. So um, my personal favorites were last year at one of our dining halls um, called Philly. There's an all day breakfast bar. So if worse came to worse, I could always get a chocolate chip pancake or an egg sandwich or something like that, which was awesome. And um, there's also always cereal. So that those were like my go-to if there was nothing else. But um, there was not very many times that I had to get one of those things. So although I'm a picky eater, there's always like those staples of pizza and pasta and the um, cereal and there's bagels all day and all that stuff. So all of those are always like, we're always there for backup for me, which was awesome. Um, and it was really comforting to know that like I was always going to be able to find something that I wanted, even though I am a really picky eater. Um, but yeah, my favorite thing at the dining hall was um, the mac and cheese bars. So those were on Wednesdays at HOCO last year. So those were my favorite things to go to. I'll have to say as well, like the mac and cheese, which I love the mac and cheese bar, but the mac and cheese that they have just like on the normal line that has like the breadcrumbs on top is so good. Um, and although that isn't a 
think I'm frozen again. There I am. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I was just saying like, you got to eat mac and cheese every once in a while, like eat healthy, but also like take the cookie on your way out, that kind of stuff. But <laughs> um, one more thing that I know that we wanted to kind of talk about if say you want to get outside, like Emily was saying, but maybe you don't have time to go on an outdoor adventure. We have this huge space called College Woods. Juliana, do you want to tell us like a little bit more about College Woods and how you can get out there? Yeah, so um, College Woods is something that I discovered we had uh, once I got here. Um, and it's one of, I always say these places are one of my favorite places to go, but I just have a lot of favorite places, I guess. Um, College Woods is a great way just to kind of get off campus. Um, it's nice because at one moment you are surrounded by a bunch of beautiful brick buildings on campus. And then in the next, you are in the middle of the woods and you wouldn't even know um, that you were still like on a college campus, um, which is nice just to be able to get that escape. That's so close. You don't even, it's within walking distance. You don't even have to like, you know, drive, get on the bus, anything like that. Um, my friends and I go out there a lot. Um, our favorite thing to do is to go hammocking. Uh, we'll, you know, get our hammocks out, set them up right by the river. Um, and we'll just kind of sit there, you know, we'll do some homework or we'll just take in the sunlight. Um, and it's super beautiful in the fall too. I like to go out and take a lot of pictures um, or just walk on the hiking trails just to get outside um, and go for a walk that's not, you know, across the street or something like that. Um, and I know also a lot of uh, different science labs also go out there, uh, specifically biology has like a lot of labs and everything. So it's also nice that, you know, we can use that space as a recreation space, but also it can be used for academics as well to get hands-on experience too. Yeah, College Woods is 250 acres. And I think that's so hard to understand. And I think like, oh, I've been like around college woods. But when I think about how big 250 acres is, I've definitely not even like touched most of it. And like Juliana was saying, um, I, for two of my classes, we've had labs where we went into college woods. So my most recent one, we like put uh, wildlife cameras in different spots. And then we're like writing about like where we thought they would be based on like canopy cover, tree density, stuff like that. So instead of learning about it, we got to actually do it. Um, my freshman year and in our college class, we actually designed our own experiment and then went into College Woods and did it. So it is, they call it like the living classroom. So if that's, if you're interested in a major where you think that that's gonna be something you're interested in, like throughout college is getting outside and doing data collection that way, then it's great to have that huge 250 acre resource of just data collection possibilities. But with that, and I don't think we have any last minute questions. I wanna say thank you so much to everybody who's watching this today. And this is gonna be up on our YouTube page. So anybody who's watching it in the future, maybe you're in the fall and you're already a UNH student, you're watching this now. Um, feel free to watch any of our other videos on our YouTube channel. We have Q and A's, we do one a week, all semester. So we've had all different um, types of people on here from all around campus. And then also you can look at the admissions Instagram. We've done a ton of tours. I know Juliana has done one on there. So you can see us give a campus tour. So if you haven't gotten to take one yet and you're coming to UNH in the fall, or if you're a junior or sophomore and you wanted to kind of get a look, feel free to check those out um, and reach out to your admissions counselors. If you have any questions, they'll definitely be able to help you out. But I hope we were to give you some information. Thank you guys so much for coming today. And we hope that you have a great rest of your day.